Right, hello. How to make a um, team brow band with covered loops and the shark's tooth pattern. Um, now I know some of you will be doing these in just the one colour for your team, but I've just used red and white just for clarity in the video. Um, otherwise it's a bit hard to see. So things you'll need are your ribbon, your brow band, a lighter to singe the ends later on, um, a couple of clothes pegs. I like to use this glue when I make brow bands, but for um, club team or race day brow bands, I also like to sew the, um, the ends off. So I'll just get the camera sitting nicely, hopefully. Oh, I'm still on the lean. Oh well. Anyway, so we'll get started. So in your kits, there's a longer ribbon and a shorter ribbon. So in this video I'll use the white as the shorter ribbon. So the longer ribbon, if you've got standard loops on your brow band, the smaller ones that um, you'll need to make sure you've got measure out 45 centimeters on a roller. And this is where you'll want to start. Because once you've braided the band you'll use this short end here to um, cover your loop. So put the short end through and then get your other ribbon which has helpfully tangled itself up and put that over the top like that. So loop, loop your longer red end around behind, put the white on top of it, loop that round behind too and then just pop your clothes peg on there like that and now you're ready to start braiding so you've got your longer red ribbon behind the brow band and your shorter in front the short one you go under under the red ribbon at the back you like that and bring it round to the side and then you may need to just push it up in there one th key to making your triangles nice and even in a shark's tooth is making sure the ribbon is pushed up against every turn you make. So now bring your red over and go under the white here at the back and bring it up and make sure it's sitting nice. Sometimes it gets a wee bit um, kinked at the back, under the back ribbon, so if you just turn it bring it up, pull it tight, and bring your white over the top, like that, and then under the red at the back, push it up into that gap, and again, and carry that on down the bend. You might find your ends get tangled, I tend to not do it on a table, but for making the video it's a bit easier. Normally if it's hanging off towards the ground it doesn't tangle as easily and head down the band like that I'll just pause and get to the end of the band for you right and you've got to the end of your band and um, those of you that are using two colours we will Turn over and cut this one off. We'll just take it out from under there. Actually, you could, if you wanted to, you could go over for a bit more security and cut it here. Oops, sorry, totally out of video there. So, see, I've just looped it over twice here. It won't matter so much for you, those of you that are using one colour, um, like View Hill that I'm making this video for, but I just thought I'll make a multi-purpose video for everybody, any other clubs that might want to. So now I just singe the end of that so it doesn't fray. Um, you can glue this if you like, but as I said earlier, for team bands I prefer to sew them so that they stay... Um, nice if you like and um, they'd last a bit more durable too 
so I can just bring that over to the back here and just sew it into there for now. So that's sewed back to itself. We'll just leave our thread there because we'll use that when we've finished wrapping our loop. So you've got this red, this one here, and just come over. And through your loop, push it up nice and tight, pull it tight as well, and then just cover your loop like this. Right, just hopefully you can see that, it's a little awkward getting it through on the video. Through loop. sort of smooth it down if it's going a bit wrinkled um, sometimes it does go a little bit wrinkled there just get your fingernail and push it where you want it to go and then pull it tight when you've pulled it through the loop each time to help and then you won't get any gaps and things I might have to go through one more time because we've got a bit of a so if we just come over a bit so it's slightly doubled and then we're going to end up with a funny looking piece there over there and then come around to the back next to where you had your thread chop that off give it a singe and then sew it up and you are done hopefully it was easy to see. I might have to do another video yet. I just like to do a, a stitch. So I stitch through the ribbon there and then up and into this tail. Sometimes your thread doesn't behave for some reason. It could be my needle's a bit blunt too. Sew that nice and securely. I like to go over it twice just to double check. There you are. And it's all sewn up at the back so no one can see where you've worked. And then just to end your thread so you don't end up with a great big knot in the back, you just go through the same piece. A few times and then through the loop of your thread so just through that same spot through your loop and then I like to just head my thread away somewhere over there pull it tight and when you hold it tight when you cut it and the ends will disappear back into inside your um your work and then you can do the same at the other end although this end we haven't got quite so much ribbon to cut off. So here I would just chop that back. And you can tell the back because I've written the size on the back of the brow band and you'll be able to feel the um, the back of the loop. The front side should feel a lot smoother. Give that a singe. Come in here. And I forgot to say, if your starting doesn't look as neat as you want it to, you can actually undo before you've sewn like I have. You can undo it back to here somewhere and then braid down to get it nice and neat, if you like. It's not essential, but I often do that on my show brow bands. And just push that right up into the loop. Leave your thread hanging there and um, cover your loop again. And this time we'll finish at the back. When you're doing one colour, um, 
sometimes it's easier if you've got enough ribbon to work from the front but the way I designed the kits for this it will probably work the way I've shown you um, the different lengths of brow bands sometimes you get lucky and you've got you can go both from the back from the front to the back I mean like this this loop is Right, that should be just enough. Just to go to there. You can tuck that in again if you like, but I find it... Oh yeah, look, just enough. It may not be. I think just to here, and then we'll, we'll just cut it a little bit longer singe it and then we'll fold it under as we sew so instead of going through the loop here just make a nice neat wee fold just to here to meet up with that piece see how it's just folded bring your thread through and stitch it down try not to go through the, um, the PVC band underneath it tends to break your needles <laughs> You should just be able to pick up a little bit of this one into the air. If you just quite carefully just nick the edge of that, you shouldn't be able to see it from the front of your band. Occasionally you'll need a thimble here. I mean the thread does silly things like that occasionally to me too. Oh dear. Unrehearsed video here, sorry guys. Sometimes you just need to very carefully pull that through. There we go. And just get it even. When your thread's doubled, it can be a bit of a pain. Maybe a bit easier to work with single thread instead of double on the needle, but I'm gonna find you come out the end of your needle at the right and then we'll just finish that off the same as the other one loop loop head through your ribbon somewhere pull that tight cut it off done Team brow band with nice neat loops and sewn ends. But yes, if you, if you like, you can glue. But I just I think for for team brow bands that are going to get probably harder wear than a show brow band, sewing is my preferred method. 